Yeah. Welcome, bike. We're bike. The Knicks are bike. Everything's bike. Can't imagine not being bike. Rookie mock draft following the NFL Combine. So we just dropped the link in the Discord, and this shit filled up in about five seconds. We're doing the first post NFL Combine rookie mock draft. Twelve teams, super flex, non tight end premium, no bots, no personality people, no fake influencer people, just y'all. If you want to be in the next one, we will be dropping links to other rookie mocks over the coming days and weeks and whatever. You could join the BDG Discord in order to get into those, but have the fingers ready. They fill up quick. So I dropped the sleeper link. We have 12 people in here. I told them 1030 a.m. Eastern time on the dot. Exactly. We're doing three rounds. This is not live streamed. I am recording it beforehand. Mr. Tony's going to edit it. There might be times throughout the draft where I pause. I think it's 60 seconds per pick. I told them that if they miss their pick, I'm kicking them from the draft. I'm kicking them from the BDG Discord, and then I'm finding them in real lives, and I'm kicking their fucking kneecaps in, okay? So if you enjoyed, if you got a Dynasty League rookie draft coming up, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing this shit every single week. There are no landing spots for this one. We are just going off of pure conviction and combine performance. On Friday, by the time Friday rolls around, we will have probably some real NFL mock drafts posted by you know Lance Erline or whoever, and I'll be doing a rookie mock on Friday based on those landing spots now that we have more information. So with that being said, let's jump into Schlipa. That's me. I kind of want to leave the chat open for you guys to see. Maybe I'll just put it here because who gives a fuck about their stat projections. We're doing three rounds, three rounds, because I don't think y'all can handle four. Let's rip. The draft has begun. Wow, that was quick. Bijan Robinson. All right, so our uh, our crowd is still rocking with Bijan at the 101. No A. Richardson, no quarterbacks, but A. Rich does go off at the 102, and I can't really argue with that. I picked the 104 because for me, it's the easiest spot in the entire world right now because you have the three quarterbacks and Bijan Robinson. Uh, and CJ Stroud is the easy pick here for me. I still, I think those three are just in a tier together. You know, I feel like CJ Stroud is really safe. I feel like Bryce Young is kind of a mixture of CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson. He's got some floor. He's got some ceiling. He's a nice little prospect coming out of Bama at 5'10". When I say little, emphasis on the little. He's bite size. He's a miniature. Still a playmaker, though. Guy's still good at fucking football. So is CJ Stroud. So we'll take him at the 104, and we will not look bike. If you have a top four rookie pick, you're feeling fantastic. I think if you're in the top five, six, seven, you're probably feeling pretty good, too. A lot of lot of good prospects. CJ Stroud absolutely murdered his throwing. He murdered the throwing portion of the combine to the point where, I, man, I wouldn't. I think he's going to end up going to Indy. I think what we're going to see is Bryce Young to Houston. I think Stroud to Indy. And then some team's going to trade up for Richardson. I still think Richardson's probably the QB3 off the board. But that doesn't mean he can't be the QB1 in fantasy. Obviously, the upside is crazy. Obviously, he can step on the field and rip off 70, 80-yard runs, whatever, whatever. So we got JSN going off the board at the 105, which I think is probably correct. I think JSN and Quentin Johnson are locks to be round one wide receivers. I don't know who I would consider in this rookie class to be rock, uh, locks first round NFL drafts. JSN absolutely killed the combine in what he did perform. He did the agility drills, absolutely murked it, like 99th percentile type beat. Quentin Johnson did not run the 40, but came in at like 6'2", 6'3", looked extremely fluid. Uh, Johnson's a guy I've been getting higher and higher on, so I like those two picks right there, the two wide receivers. Jameer Gibbs at the 107. I'm still a little, I'm still a little bit scared about Jameer Gibbs, man. I, I, for me, like... In order for me to pick him really, really highly, like Will Levis still, Will Levis is going to be a top 10 pick. So to grab him at the 109, I think is crazy value right there. Jameer Gibbs, under 200 pounds, 199 pounds. There's just not a lot of players that end up being really successful in fantasy under 200 pounds. That's what scares me with Jameer Gibbs. Maybe he gets first round draft capital. If he gets first round draft capital, I'll probably change my tune on him and I'll be fine with him there. Jordan Addison was probably another loser out of the combine. Weighs in at like 173 pounds, runs a 44940. He's someone that might dip out of the first round. He's someone that could go very end of the first round, even early day two, which would not be great relative to JSN and Quentin Johnson. I feel like Will Levis down at the 109 is just disrespectful. I feel like that's kind of bad process there. I feel like we need to grow up and we need to realize that we're all pretty fucking stupid. All right, I'm back here at the 204. We had Zay, uh, who do we have? So we had Will Levis, the 109. I'm pausing this draft, fuck y'all. It's nice to be the boss. It's nice to run the world. Will Levis, 109. Kendra Miller, 110. That's crazy sauce. I love Kendra. And he had been like my running back four, I think, behind Bijan, Gibbs, Charbonnet, Miller. Miller did not test at the combine. So I hate that. I think he's currently shitting on booty. No pun intended. Kendra Miller, that, that's too early until we know his pro day numbers, which is unfortunate, man. Like you, you can't really compare pro day 
to combine because all these dudes are in the same environment. All these dudes are stacking up next to each other. All these dudes have been in Indy for a week. All these dudes are running on three to four hours of sleep. You want to see who's a competitor. You want to see who's taking care of themselves. You want to see who's out partying and who's not. You want to see who's taking care of their legs and their body and their minds and who's not, right? You, you nice little cushy down there at Texas Christian. You've been sleeping in your bed for a month. You got your girlfriend waking up next to you. You know, you're able to work out. You're able to do your ice baths. You're able to do your own fucking recovery out here. And then you run a pro day. Like, of course, you're going to run a tenth of a second faster than everybody out in Indy that's fucking running on no sleep. And they're getting killed out here. They're, they're got to run their 40-yard dash. They say the NFL combine starts at 1 o'clock on Sunday. These motherfuckers don't even run their 40 until like 6 p.m. Eastern time. They've probably been up since 6 a.m. Eastern time. There's a different level of animal that you got to be to show up on the field in Indy and still murk the combine. And it, it's a negative for the dudes that don't do it for me. So Zach Charbonnet got out. Out there at 214 215 pounds whatever it was ran a four five three love it to see it at that size so Kendrick Miller drops below Charbonnet for me probably not a first round pick right now uh Josh Downs also came in wildly undersized so I can't say I can't say that I can get on board with him at the 112 anymore because he's just like I think it was 5'9 171 173 really really small very very likely to be pigeonholed so for me Zay Flowers at 2-1 is a beautiful pick there because I'd take him over Downs now Devon A. Chain 2-2 Booty at 2-3 Booty probably had uh, the worst combine of pretty much any of the players here. He came in an inch and 10 pounds lighter than where I thought he was going to be. He barely got off the floor. He was playing with fucking anchors on his feet, jumped 29 inches. I could, I can, my vert is like 32. I got a 32 inch vert. And listen, I'm like, I'm borderline elite. At, like, listen, if you got all the fantasy football people in the industry together, I, my bars on player profile would be top notch. I'd be, people would be like, he's in a generational fantasy football analyst. That's what people would be saying. So my shit's like 33 inch vert, but like booty 29 inch, you're an LSU wide receiver. That's supposed to be like a second round pick. Fuck up out of here. I will take, um, this is probably where I'm looking at Jalen Hyatt. And again, I'm probably going to let draft capital and landing spot dictate whether or not I take Jalen Hyatt here in a real draft. But like the rest of the tier of running backs kind of just falls off. They're all dudes that like might have been the RB3 might be day two capital, but can go anywhere from like round three to round five. So if I'm on the clock here, definitely like some of the tight ends. And if this was tight end premium, this is probably where I start looking at Dalton Kincaid. Uh, but Hyatt feels like the last guy of the tier that I feel comfortable taking. These are probably so pissed. I told him beforehand, I was like, listen, we might pause the draft sometimes. So I'm going to talk that talk. So what happened. You're going to enter my drafts. You play by my fucking rules. Learn the rules. Zach Evans at 2-5. Don't love that. This motherfucker really came to the combine, stepped on the scale, 202 pounds. I thought his playing weight was like 212, turns out. That was a lie. You know what's my favorite part about the combine? It's just everybody just gets up there and lies. Everyone's a liar. Like, this is how NFL teams should conduct their interviews. They don't interview. They just send sneaky undercover reporters to ask these guys questions and see how often they lie. Like Keishon Booty got on there and was like, I'm going to run a 4-3. Guy runs a 4-5. Every single player on the board that's been picked so far in this draft told reporters that they were going to run a 4-3. Not a single fucking one did besides Devon A. Chain. He didn't even. He had a 4-3-2. He probably told everybody he was going to break the record, 4-2-4. That's how you get character. That's how you do the character concerns right there. Don't, don't like set them up where they know what questions you're going to ask them. Let them lie. Let them lie. Zach Evans out here running fucking coming in at 202 booty running a 4-3 Jalen Hyatt was sweet I can look at five different guys on the board right now that said they were going to break the record not even close uh but Jalen Hyatt came in six foot 176 so he's kind of undersized for a guy that like you want to see win downfield but uh his routes are smooth he's a he's a defensive separator he can take the top off ran a 4-4 flat which you know is good relative to just you know raw scores but at that size it's a little bit underwhelming uh, Zach Evans, yeah, 202. So that's not fun to see for someone who runs with that much violence and power. Michael Mayer at 26. He is definitely not my tight end one anymore. I think it's a mix between Kincaid and uh, and Darnell Washington. Love the pick. The 101 spot there is absolutely just murk in this draft. Tajay Spears at 27. He performed really well at the combine. Cedric Tillman, I thought he was a winner at the combine too. The other Tennessee wide receiver. Interesting that their gap there now is like four or five picks. Uh, Sean Tucker did not perform at the combine. He's a, he's a coward as well. Hendon Hooker. I think we're going to see Hendon Hooker continue to rise up draft boards. I think he'll end up being someone who gets much higher NFL draft capital than we're expecting. Like if Hendon Hooker goes within the top 40, 50 picks, he's going to end up having to be 
selected within the top 15, 16 picks of rookie drafts. I am Mike on the clock and don't love most of the players left on the board. What tight ends we got? Oh man, I put it all super flex. I should have put them all positionally. I'm a moron. Rashi Rice, not a fan. Marvin Mims, combine winner, but also not really a fan of his game at all. Avanaconda did not run. What a coward. His 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 like calling card is supposed to be straight line speed. He's like 210, 215. Kind of like that Tevin Coleman fit where he can, he could go right to the 49ers and probably contribute. Dwayne McBride's a great pure runner. Chase Brown was a big winner at the combine as well. Um, he weighed in at like 210, ran a 4-4-3, I want to say. Just did really, really well in the athletic testing. And I think I want to put my chips on someone like Chase Brown. I'll go Chase Brown here. I actually want to look at his, his uh, 5'10", 209, athletic testing off the fucking charts. 4-4-3, 40-yard dash, 89th percentile speed score, burst score, 95th percentile, jumped out of the gym. So Chase Brown uh, from Illinois, big combine winner there. I'll take him. This is probably like where I'm trying to grab running backs. I feel like once you get to this part of the draft, like the wide receivers just have so many flaws and they're probably going to be like the wide receiver three, four on their depth chart to the point where the upside is just so it's so shaky. Tight ends, Luke Musgrave, uh, Musgrave. So you're seeing a lot of tight ends here. Sam Laporta should absolutely be drafted. Uh, Zach Kuntz kid from old dominion who used to be at Penn state went crazy at the combine. I, lo I like where the rent the end of this round three draft is going, though. A lot of good players here. If you got, like, back end of second, third round picks, this is a really good draft to have them. We have uh, Luke Musgrave, who's, like, more athlete than he really is a tight end. Uh, but some team's going to pick him really, really early because he's wildly athletic. Parker Washington, y'all know I love me some Parker Washington. Slot wide receiver coming out of Penn State. Has a lot of Debo. I was I was watching him play, and I was like, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Debo Samuel. And then he came out, and he was like, yeah, my inspiration is Debo Samuel. I try to watch his tape. I try to, like, execute like he does on the field. He's a slot wide receiver, uh, bigger body size, like 5'10", 205. So he's got, like, the running back build, and he moves really well with the ball in his hands. He's a really strong catcher, kind of like Josh Downs, where – you throw him the ball, he's going to come down with it, and then he's going to make a play with the ball in his hands. But he's not going to be a dude who beats man, man or press coverage on the outside. Really love uh, Parker Washington. Evan Hull, you know, Noah hit on Evan Hull. Evan Hull had one – he kind of, similar to Chase Brown, where he just, like, kind of dominated across the board at the combine athletically. Dwayne McBride did not compete at the combine, but he is a bigger running back that – really smooth. I actually think, like, if you can't get a – Kendra Miller, Dwayne McBride might be like the next best thing. And you're getting him in this draft for two two rounds later. So Bobby Blunts, you know, you're consistent if nothing else there. Go watch Dwayne McBride. Went to a smaller school. I think it was um can't, oh shit. Oh shit, Jack. Are we breaking news right now? Can't wait to be a Falcons fan. Wait, I saw Jack tweet like I'm crafting a Lamar Jackson tweet right now. Jack, don't do this to me. Don't fucking do it. Report no long term deal for Lamar Jackson. He will be tagged by four PM. If exclusive, expectation is Ravens will look to trade Jackson. If non-exclusive, the Ravens believe there's two teams that cannot, will not match. Atlanta, Chicago. Which means it's not going to be Chicago. The Ravens feel they can match any offer sheet from the Jets. They would be inclined to do, though, for these reasons. Oh, baby. Let's fucking go. Let's go! I've been saying this the whole fucking time. One, the Falcons, by May 1st, we will have another starting quarterback. It will not be Desmond Ritter. And it's looking more and more like it's going to be L. Jacks Lana. The Super Bowl goes through Atlanta in 2023. I was so I thought we were getting Deshaun Watson last year. I'm so fucking glad we didn't. I'm so glad. Like, uh, it would be so hard to root for that dude for fucking five years. Lamar Jackson coming to fucking Atlanta. I'm permanently stuck like this. There's nothing I can do. Oh, this kind of hurts my traps. Uh, okay. Get back into it, Nicholas. Um, so that was three rounds. Honestly, we could have done four rounds. I'm ready to rip four rounders. I'm going to do possibly a four rounder on Friday based on some NFL experts mock draft that will probably have four or five, seven rounds of landing spots. Uh, so here's a rookie mock draft for you. Best team drafted. I, I love this is a really well-rounded team. You got the best running back, one of the best wide receivers, and arguably the best tight end as the third tight end off the board. We went with some ooh, I, I think this is a risky draft. I like it, but it's risky. A Rich, obviously, we don't know, you know, how he's gonna pan out. The upside is crazy. The downside is that he's not a starting quarterback in three years. Devon A chain, 188 pounds, you know, with the, the not historically a great running back resume there. And then McIntosh came in slow and small, which was wildly disappointing. Bryce Young, Booty, Roshan Johnson. Okay. Okay. Wow. Unreal. I actually don't even really like this, to be honest. I'm not really like sold on Hyatt as a as a player. So it's like it's tough to draft dudes where you're like, oh, it's the end of the tier, the best player left in the tier, but I don't really like him that much as players. That's kind of how I feel with Hyatt. But love getting CJ Stroud in a super flex draft. JSN, Zach Evans, Rashi Rice, Quentin Johnston, Michael Mayer, 
Marvin Mims, Gibbs, Spears, Musgrave, Addison, Tillman, Parker. I like this. If you're wide receiver and needy, this is a nice little draft right here. I feel like we're going to be able to get Addison at like the 110 now. If he drops into the early second round, Will Levis, Sean Tucker, Evan Hull. I feel like rather than taking Tucker, you might as well take a quarterback, tight end, or wide receiver, and then just take Evan Hull if you're going to get him at the 3-9. Similar players, I almost feel like at this point, Hull's got a much better like prospect profile. Miller, Hooker, McBride, actually... Despite him taking Miller at the 110, which was crazy, the team, I feel like, ended up pretty well. Charmnick, Kincaid, Charlie Jones, I like that too. I got to actually watch more film on Charlie Jones out of Purdue. He had a really good combine. I haven't watched him yet. Downs, Bigsby, Xavier Hutchinson. Hutchinson's actually an interesting player too. Big big body size, played pretty well at Iowa uh, Iowa State. I think it was Iowa State. Am I crazy? No, was it Iowa State? Where did Xavier Hutchinson play? It was with, it was with Brees Hall. Iowa State, yeah. <sighs> Fucking on. Don't start with me today. All right, uh, that's going to wrap it up, okay? So subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the button that looks like this if you're old. Join the Discord if you're young. All the above. I love you. I'm out of here.